Kayla, how aware are you at the end of the game? Something like that. Obviously, you're not trying to like manipulate the game, but obviously, when you're the last rebound, it's right next to the scoreboard. So <laughs> I think everybody's pretty aware of what's happening. I mean, honestly, like. Somebody had to get the rebound, and I was actually the closest one to the ball. So, yeah. Alia, for you, um, I guess how has it been just growing into a new role with this team this year, and I guess picking your spots and having different games, like eight assists one night, twenty-four points tonight, and just knowing how to choose the spots. Yeah, I think um, it's just about reading the floor and taking what the defense gives you. Um, I feel like I just try to be come to me and not force it. So if it's a night where I have more assists than anything else, and that's what it's going to be, and then if it's a night where I can score the ball and get rebounds and set myself on the boards, and that's what it's going to be. It's really just taking what they give me. Right. Leah, Christy said she and you talked a little bit about your recent games, how they can help you get going. What do you feel like ignited you tonight and led to the big performance? Um, God. Seriously, I think, you know, you always want to play the best, and I feel like, especially these past two games, for me, just making sure that I have a presence on the floor, and so tonight, I mean, it was just, you know, prayer, just knowing that he's equipped me for anything, and so it's the game that we had tonight, and so I'm just super blessed. Go Christine and Luke. For both of you, um, obviously, the, lots of great positive things happened in the last 24 hours. Was it a little difficult to get back up for it? Obviously, LA was playing well, turnovers, you know, is it... Can you maybe describe your mindset when, you know, you, you've already accomplished so many goals, but of course you want to win the game and you did, but how hard that is to kind of get through that on a night like this? Thank you. Yeah, I thought we could have came out with a little more energy. I thought we seemed a little bit flat. Um, and I don't think that wasn't because of we felt complacent with already being in the playoffs or anything like that. I'm just not sure if our energy was quite where it needed to be. and. Um, I thought we could have picked that up a little bit better. Um, we weren't always on the same page, and I think that kind of started from the beginning. We didn't really play with as much pace as we usually do at moments. We definitely did, but I didn't think it was consistent uh, throughout the game. Um, and then obviously we could have taken care of the ball a little bit better. I think, you know, we win by 10 to 15, maybe even more than that, if we just take better care of the ball. So um, I think we – something you go back and watch, and, you know, um, on Friday we got to come out with a lot more energy. we got Lou, then we'll go in the back to Don. Uh, last week, Coach uh, was talking about the improvement of the team. She said it, toughness and maturity has come out in the last month since the Olympic break and those practices. Do you feel like this fourth quarter was an example of that, where you know you got challenged, you made, you made some runs, but you, you couldn't put them away, but you had to fight them off again? Yeah, I think, you know, over the course of the season, it's about making sure that we're able to close out games. There were some games that we lost at the beginning of the season because our fourth quarter wasn't great. And so even going into this fourth quarter, you know, we just emphasized that, listen, this is the fourth quarter, 10 more minutes, we have to give it all our best. We knew that they weren't just going to lay down and let us take the game. And so just making sure that if they score, then we have to score and they get a stop. And that's really our mindset, especially in that fourth quarter. We'll go down, then we'll go with Kim on the right. Yeah, for both of you, just six straight home games, including tonight, to get that home stand started off with a win, knowing how well you played already the second half, crazy environment every night here. How's it feel to get that home stand started out right, knowing that you're just going to be here at home for so long? Yeah, I think it's important. You know, these are games you really need to win um, at home. And the more we can win, the better we can position ourselves for the playoffs. So, um, and also we're just a competitive group of individuals. Like nobody wants to lose. That's not fun, especially in front of these fans that a lot of them like, you know, they only get to see the Fever play at one time. They spend a lot of money to come here and, and watch us and have fun with us. So, um, you know, you want to you wanna kind of give them a show every single time we're in here. And honestly, it's a lot of fun. So uh, don't take that for granted because before we know it, uh, the season will be over. And I think this team is just trying to go one game at a time. But to get the home stand started off on the right note, I think, was super important. And it's just continuing to go one step at a time and, and continue to build that confidence. But uh, I feel like we're playing really good inside this building. So it's just continuing to build on that. Go with Kane, then we'll go with James again. Yep, and just kind of following up on uh, Christine's question earlier, just when the turnovers start to kind of mount and build, what is said or what, what do you guys do to kind of refocus and refocus and get back on the same page? We get straight to it. We say we need to take care of the ball. I feel like that's as simple as it is. I mean, we know what we have to do, and most of the times it's silly mistakes, so making sure that we just pay attention, make sure that we're ready for it, but at the end of the day, like, just take care of the ball and make a good decision with it. Go, James, and go on Zoom. Okay, we played 40 minutes tonight, tired game. Um, Obviously, probably wasn't the plan, but I guess what, how do you assess how you feel throughout a game? And do you ever ask to come out, or how did that go? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, like, <laughs> I like sprinting. I already told you guys. I like to run. I don't know. Like, I feel like 
finding a balance of when to conserve my energy within the game um, and playing with pace at the same time. I think you can, there's times where you can pick and choose. Uh, I think I've done better at that. And I think even over the last, you know, road stretch, the coaches found good, you know, minutes where I could get a quick breather that becomes very important, especially in the fourth. But I felt, felt tonight, like I felt really good and could go the, the whole stretch, but it's never really, uh, they don't really ask me. It's not really my choice. It's more so they know what they're thinking and what we need in the moment. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I could probably go play another 40 minutes. I don't usually like to stop, so. <laughs> go George on Zoom, then we'll finish with Mike. George Goy from the Just Say Goy Sports Podcast. Caitlin, many rookies struggle to find both team and individual success in the rookie year. LeBron, Peyton Manning, and Connor Bedard did not make the playoffs in the rookie season. What does it mean to have team and rookie individual success? I mean, I think it comes with just playing the game of basketball the right way. Um, you know, coming in here, obviously, this organization hasn't been to the playoffs since 2016, and that was my main goal. And I felt like, you know, once I got comfortable and kind of was, you know, I don't know, playing style of basketball that we wanted to play, which was up-tempo, which was playing off one another, was playing, um, you know, setting my teammates up for success. And I think also once my teammates kind of got used to playing with me, it's been pretty smooth sailing and fun basketball since then. And you know, everything besides team success, like that all just comes with when your team wins. Like you got to win to have all that on the side and nobody really cares about that. Um, you know, people can talk about it. It is what it is. Um, for me, like it's it's fun winning basketball games. It's fun walking off the court and the crowd's going crazy because you know, you just won and you played a, a good game. So for me, like that's where my main focus is. And I think when I do that, everything else comes along with it. And um, I'm just thankful. I feel like I'm surrounded by really good people, really good coaches, really good teammates um, that allow me to be myself and uh, set me up for success and, you know, have a lot of fun playing with me. So I've enjoyed every single second of it. And, um, you know, I think we're just going to continue to get better. Last one, Mike Vopel. Yeah, thank you. Um, Caitlin, I just want to ask you a little bit about the defensive aspect of your game. Uh, obviously, a lot of your rebounds are going to come on that end. You had nine of them tonight on the defensive end. And then three steals, including that one late that uh, – was really key. How much do you feel like you've grown as a defensive player and, and how how that part of your game you you feel like is uh, really coming along? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I feel like I'm a pretty good on-ball defender. It's just the off-ball that I continue need to continue to work on. Um, sometimes I get caught, you know, watching my man or don't always – rotate in the way that I need to. I get caught standing a little bit. Um, and the rotations are very different than what I did in college. So I think it's still been kind of a learning process for me. And I continue to go back and watch the film with Coach Jesse and continue to learn. Um, so I think that's just the biggest area that I can prove is definitely my off-ball defense. But honestly, I think I just try to use my basketball IQ and understanding angles to make plays for my team on that end and try to get my, you know, try to get deflections, um, you know, and the one that happened late where we had to end up switching. I knew that was going to be the play just because coming off a ball screen, I come off a million ball screens and AB wasn't letting her take the mid-range jump shot. So I knew she was going to try to dump it down to Hamby. So I tried to, you know, cut it off and get my hand on, on the ball, and I, I was able to, and then Liz kind of picked it up. So I think just trying to use my IQ um, and my length and my speed at the same time, but I think the biggest area I can still improve is definitely my off-ball defense.